I'm building a very cool cast metal vehicle for a focal scene on my model railroad layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I'm building an awesome cast metal utility truck that will be a focal point of one of the scenes on my layout. My oldest son recently graduated from electrical lineman school and has been working in the industry for about the last 18 months. So I was inspired to include a mini scene on my layout of some linemen working on some poles, working on the lines along a highway. Well, it just so happens that Showcase Miniature produces a fantastic utility truck kit. So I picked one up at Midwest Model Railroad and I'm going to build it with you today. Oh, hey, if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. But now, let's head on over to the workbench and we'll take a look at this kit and see how it comes out. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. The kit that I'm building today is Showcase Miniatures InScale FL-M2 Utility Bucket Truck. It's an award-winning cast metal model that has been around for a few years. I think you'll see that this is just a superb model, and I know it'll make a great focal piece for my North Texas scene that I've been working on. The model comes with well-illustrated instructions, though there were a few steps that were a bit unclear that I had to kind of make up as I went. I first laid out all of the parts to make sure that everything was there. Then the first step was to file away any flash on the parts from the casting process. This is a high quality kit and there wasn't a lot of flash to remove, but I did have to remove some bits from the casting gates on the wheels and a few other places. Also, the rear chassis had some flash to be removed with a hobby knife from around some of the details. A few of the details are etched metal, but I didn't remove those from the carrier sheet until I was ready to install them, so I filed those parts at that time. The cab is cast resin and also had some slight bits of flash that I removed with the edge of my hobby knife. I painted the parts with a primer and a base color before assembly. For this step, I taped them to a scrap of masonite to paint one side, then when it had dried, turned them over to paint the other side. I started with Tamiya surface primer from a rattle can. The key here is not to apply too much paint and thus obliterate the detail. That's far too easy to do with a rattle can where you don't have control of the paint flow, so be sure to keep the rattle can moving quickly and go with light coats. With the primer applied, I rearranged the parts on some fresh painter's tape. The base color is flat black, mixed very thin and applied in light passes with my airbrush. Now the final color of this model will be white, so why start with a black base coat? Well, the black helps create shadows, it helps bring out details, and it makes the final color look deeper. These are some artist techniques that I've learned over the years, but to get a deeper explanation, Boomer Dioramas recently made a video where he explained exactly this technique in great detail. I'll link that video in the description down below, but also I highly recommend his channel as Boomer is a fantastic professional art artist and a great modeler, and his videos are incredibly instructive. I personally have learned a great deal from him, especially from his painting videos, so be sure to check out his channel. When the paint had dried, I removed the parts from the carrier and was ready to begin assembly. I applied a burnt umber wash to the rear drive section to give it a more dirty, grimy look. I ended up applying several layers of the burnt umber to make it look like a realistic color. I also removed some of the paint from the areas where the glue joints will be. I won't explain every detail of the assembly process as much of it is quite straightforward, simply following the directions, but I will say that I used gel CA type glue to assemble the model. I started with the basic frame and glued the cab seat, front bumper, front wheels, and then the rear dual wheel sets to the rear drive part. 
Next, I assembled the bucket boom. This is by far the most complicated part of the process, as there is a fair amount of drilling and assembly with pins. A few recommendations here. Number one, make sure that you have good, sharp, and properly sized drill bits. The instructions tell you exactly what you need. Number two, Cut the assembly pins a little bit long, then trim them after the assembly and gluing is complete. And three, test fit the boom for the position you want before gluing. The cylinders and pistons for the boom as they come are too long to allow the boom to be folded down into its stowed position. In my case, I wanted the boom extended, so I applied the parts as they came, but if you want the boom in the stowed position, you'll need to cut the cylinders a little bit shorter. There is a fair amount of test fitting, adjusting, filing, and such required to get the boom assembled just right. The pins that hold the boom together are glued with CA just on the outside ends to hold them in position, but also allow the boom to move. After the boom is assembled and the CA has cured, cut the extra length off of each pin flush with the part with some good heavy side cutters. Work carefully to assemble both joints of the boom. The final step in boom assembly is installing the bucket. Again, be careful with your glue joint here so the bucket will be able to swing with the boom as it moves in position. Next, I began assembling the truck bed, including the boom pivot base and the stowing rack. The boom platform is an etched metal piece with handrails that fold in two directions. It is definitely the most delicate piece on the whole kit, as the handrails can easily break off. In retrospect, I wish I had installed this part near the end of the assembly. The boom simply sits into, but is not glued into, the pivot base, allowing it to turn for position. At this point, it was time to paint the actual model color. I used Vallejo White mixed thin and applied with my airbrush for this. As always with an airbrush, build up the color slowly, applying several light coats. I also kept my airbrush slightly high and painted with a downward angle most of the time. The bottom portions of the model received only a light overspray of the white. This leaves these parts of the model more of a gray color to simulate heavy shadows where the sun would not hit. I painted the truck bed, boom, platform, rear bumper, cab, and etched metal headache rack in exactly this manner. While the paint was drying, I applied a flat earth wash to the tires to simulate dirt and mud that would be picked up in the field. It looked a bit heavy here, so I washed over it later with a thin black wash to tone it down. The wheels on most utility trucks are white, so I used a super fine brush to paint the wheels white. Simply allow the contours of the wheels to guide your brush as you paint. After the white had completely dried, I used a thin black wash to bring out some of the details. The kit included real details for both electrical line and guy wire. For the guy wire reels, I painted the wire portion a metallic silver. The electric line reels I left black on the cable portions. The ends of the reels I painted light gray and then highlighted with a thin black wash. I added a bit of flat earth wash to the lower bumper and fuel tanks to simulate grime. With that paint dry, I glued these reel details together end to end, making sure that the best looking part of each reel was facing up. Painting the lights on the N-Scale model proved to be very challenging. For the headlights and reverse lights, I used Malto liquid chrome pin, putting a bit of the product on a paint palette, then applying it with a fine pointed brush. I was quite pleased with how the headlights came out. I used the same paint to dry brush onto the front grill, which also came out looking great. I'm very impressed with the Malto liquid chrome pins, and I'm going to include a link to them in my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below, so be sure to check those out. For the other lights, I used Vallejo transparent red and clear orange paint, which looked good. 
My greatest frustration and disappointment with this project came in painting the clearance lights on the cab. I was not happy with how they came out, but fortunately they are partially hidden by the headache rack, so it hides part of the problem. The tail lights, blinkers, and backup lights are tiny, but a very fine pointed brush made these doable and only a minor bit of white touch-up was needed. I used the included clear plastic piece to create the windshield. This curved material was challenging to cut to size, but I cut it slightly large intentionally and then trimmed it as I installed it. I glued it in place with canopy glue, which dries clear. There really isn't any instructions for installing side or rear window glazing, so I didn't. I don't think it will be noticeable when this model is in the scene. Next, I applied a black wash to many of the parts to serve as a panel liner and to weather the truck slightly. I applied the weathering lightly as most utility trucks are kept fairly clean. I considered applying more oily weathering to the cylinders on the boom, but after looking at numerous photographs and observing utility trucks working where I live, I didn't see much of this kind of grime, so I left it off. I glued in the included details to the truck bed, the two transformers which I had painted gray, the water cooler which I had painted orange, and the chest cooler which I had painted blue. Finally, it was time for final assembly. I glued the cab onto the chassis, then the material platform, the bed, the rear wheel assembly, and the rear bumper. I cut the etched metal headache racks from the carrier sheet and installed them, and finally the rear handrails, which are also etched metal. I used a scrap of styrofoam and a model of a power pole that will be used in this scene to set the proper height and configuration for the bucket boom for my scene. I then glued the cylinders in place to keep it exactly as I had positioned it. And with that, my model was complete. I still need a couple of line workers, and of course these images are simply mock-ups as the scene is not yet complete, but I think this model will look great as a focal point on this open country scene in North Texas. Thanks again to my son Nate for his inspiration and his periodic input that helped this model and scene come together. So that's how I built this superb looking bucket truck, and I am very excited about how this model, along with a couple of linemen working on the pole, will make a great focal point on this North Texas open country scene that I am building. I think it's going to look fantastic. You know, sometimes a single model, even a single detail, can make the difference between a dull, forgettable scene and one that really draws the eye and the attention of your viewer. And I think this model is going to do exactly that. If this model is something that's of interest to you, as of the recording of this video, they're still available at Midwest Model Railroad. You may want to go there and pick one up. Also, be sure to check out those Molto Liquid Chrome paint pens that I talked about in my Amazon Pick of the Week, as well as tons of other valuable links, all in the description down below. Well, if you'd like to see how I build model highways like the one this truck will be parked on or other model railroad content, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me on Tuesdays as I bring you even more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?